Are you ready for ResBall? In this video, I've worked with Netflix to release the latest on this amazing new sports film to include first look images and a phenomenal interview with Native director Sidney Freeland. Stay tuned. Guys, this is Vincent Schilling from Native Viewpoint, and perhaps you're ready to cheer on some res ball, a new sports drama that's headed to Netflix. It's about players from a Native American reservation called the Cheska Warriors, and this is directed by Sidney Freeland, who co-wrote the script with Sterling Harjo, Reservation Dogs, and yes, also produced by LeBron James. Wow, <laughs> it's pretty incredible, you guys. Uh, I'm so excited to talk to you, um, Sydney. This is just... Um, an incredible project. I was very fortunate to see it. Um, Res Ball to me is a wonderful story about these Navajo high school basketball team players, the Cheska Warriors, film about the beauty, resilience of Native American culture, and also the reality of reservation life. What is the importance of a film like this um, to you? First of all, thanks for, thanks for having me, uh, Vincent. Absolutely. Um, uh, no, I think I think this is an incredibly um, important um, uh, film for for all of us. You know, I think when we when uh, we first started sort of trying to crack the the story, it w it was um, it was all about like okay, like how would we tell the story? You know, um, you know, so much has been told about you know life on reservations, on the indigenous experience, on you know Native Americans in general from the outside in you know, and it's a very sort of, it's a very specific sort of perspective. And we wanted to do kind of do the opposite of that, which is that we wanted to tell the story from the inside out. Yeah. And so a lot of that was just drawing on our, you know, like when, when Stoller and I were sort of talking about their initial like kernels of, of, of the, of the story, it was, it was sort of like, what, what would we want to tell? What would we want to do? And so we just sort of drew a lot from our own personal experiences, um, you know, and we found there was a lot of overlap and, um, in that and we really just tried to try to capture that and 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 put that together on a, um on the screen in the form of, in the form of res ball this whole process to me as a native american film critic has been really exciting uh i have to say thanks to netflix who literally bought out a theater for me to watch this film and i, I was standing there and and then they just now called me uh last week and i was like uh just had shoulder surgery got a bum wing here and i was like but you know what i feel so good about this film. <laughs> i'm just like totally excited so sitting there as what when i was watching this film um i see this beautiful it opens up these beautiful images uh you know the the reservation the the world of reservation especially the navajo nation some of the most beautiful areas and the cinematography was gorgeous well done and i was just like wow and as things started to unfold immediately I just found tears just rolling down my face. And I was like, wow, the emotions I'm feeling because we as native people don't get this very much. And it was legitimate. It was, you know, done by you uh, and written by Sterling. And this, this, this story is just incredible. So having said all of this, you've come from such films, Drunk Town's Finest. You were just working on Marvel's Echo. You know, and now you have Res Ball on Netflix. Wow. How far you have come as a director. It's an honor to sit here and talk to you, Sydney. All you've done. What is it like looking back where you started and where you are now? Like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I will say this this project in particular was, was had, had, you know, particular personal meaning for myself, you know, because I've, um, yes, I've been very fortunate and able to, you know, work on like, you know, like on projects like Marvel and work on TV and, and so on and so forth. And so this was, you know, but um, I am Navajo and I'm from, uh, I'm from the Navajo reservation and I play basketball. I played basketball gro growing up, you know, I played, that, now I that played, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, I was a terrible <laughs> awesome. athlete, but uh, okay, okay. I was a terrible athlete, but I did play. Um, 
<laughs> and um, you know, and and that that's what sort of we, we drew a lot of a uh, a lot on the res ball sort of experience. Um, so I think I think for myself it was it was particularly um, exciting to um, come back literally in, in this case home, yeah. um, and scout locations in in places that I lived on my home reservation um, to cast Navajo people uh, to to be actors in the film. Um, to shoot in, to shoot in Shiprock, you know, uh, on the reservation, which is, you know, I went to, I'm originally from a town called Gallup and I went to high school in a town called Farmington. And we used to drive by, um, you know, to give you context is like, you know, we used to drive by Shiprock every single weekend and, and coming, coming, going from boarding, boarding school where, where I went. Um, and Shiprock was just this rock in the distance, you know, wow. and, and, and uh, didn't have, you know, it was just, a, a, a nice looking thing and now it's the centerpiece of, of kind of uh it's, it's the spine of our of our of our film and yeah. so i think that was particularly meaningful for myself was just to have uh, to be able to come home and shoot on my reservation you know i think um you know that being said it's still it's still a film production it's still a movie you still have uh you know all these things bearing down on you and so there's it was it was a balance of like trying to trying to uh, soak in the moment and 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 appreciate the, the the gravity of what we were able to do while also you know still remembering that we have to make a movie at the same mm -hmm. time logistics so, was, versus life <laughs> yeah yeah there were there were definitely moments where it's like you know you you know you've been on 100 film sets and and then you turn around it's like oh actually um uh i used to you know um i went to this place with my dad when i was six years old you know, and so it was definitely trying to take in those moments to, to appreciate stuff. And then we, we also tried to capture that, some of that sentimentality and, and emotion and, and um, you know, authenticity into the film as well. Yeah, yeah. Authenticity, big word for this film. And it, 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 it deserves the stamp. You know, it's definitely got my stamp of authenticity approval. It's just incredible, uh, incredible body of work, you know. And I have to say, there are some wonderful actors in this film. I mean, just wonderful and, and pe people I've never seen before. You know what I'm saying? Um, how, how did you find all these all these great new actors? Because you know that joke about Hollywood's always said, well, you can never find enough Native American actors. And it's like, well, then go watch a film by Sidney Freeland. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I think no, I think I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. Like authenticity is is was at the core of everything that we kind of did. And, and that, you know, I think starting with the actors, um, you know, it was extremely important for, for myself being a huge basketball fan that we had these kids had to be able to act, but they had to be able to play basketball as well, too. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. So what does that mean? So, you know, I didn't even did, think that before because, yeah, you have to find the skill, too. I didn't even I didn't, I didn't even go there. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, you watch so many you watch so many movies or TV shows and they'll show, you know, they'll show the. The, the the talent in front of the camera and a close up like this and they're doing right doing this off camera and they cut to the reverse where you can't see their face and it's obviously a body double and you right. know so on and so forth and so um so for us it was extremely important that these kids had to be able to, be able to play basketball so it's it's sort of you're you're kind of asking uh double the you know you're asking double of these kids who have yeah. never been on a film set before mm -hmm. uh to also act and play basketball mm -hmm. so so uh, how we kind of went about it is, you know, obviously, you know, having LeBron as as a producer definitely helped. And so we did a casting call, uh, the U.S. and Canada. We got 5,000 submissions. Um, That's and, wonderful. And uh, what everybody had to do in their audition is that they had to put themselves on tape, meaning reading the lines and, uh, um, you know, um, uh, being the actor. Uh, but in addition to that, we also had, they also had to do three things. They had to shoot a free throw, shoot a layup, and shoot a three-pointer. Right. Oh, wow. And so and so that that allowed uh, myself and my casting director to see, you know, just how how competent they are, because mm -hmm. a lot of times people will put on the resume like I'm experienced horseback rider or I'm right, experienced right, right, right. ballet right. dancer. And it's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of lip service. So mm -hmm. so that helped us really kind of hone the list down. And from those five thousand, we just sort of trimmed it down, trimmed it down, trimmed it down yeah. until we ultimately got a list of about I think it was either 28 kids and we flew them into Albuquerque and we did what we call our our Res Ball Invitational and this was the the first half of the day was casting callbacks chemistry reads you know mm -hmm. uh you know all the actor actoring actorly stuff and the second half of the day was what we called a uh, basketball camp and we had a we had an amazing basketball choreographer 
uh, through Spring Hill, who um, uh, sort of ran them through their paces, ran them through their drills. He choreographed mm-hmm. some some plays, some sets for them to do. And, and we had a conversation at the end of the day, we kind of picked the, the best of the best of the best that we needed to tell both emotionally from an actor standpoint, but also on the court from a basketball standpoint. Wow, what a cool experience. That's cool. You know, I have to say um, that uh, to me that two of my standout actors for some and they uh, let, let me tell you you know anyone who's watched especially any of the actors are watching you guys were all phenomenal i loved you all you were all just wonderful let me know if you're watching this just want to tell you you were wonderful but two of my standout actors i have to tell you um that that uh I, for myself as a native journalist and critic i noticed this handsome young guy uh kachani brat i mean this guy you know who who plays jimmy holiday just, Get ready, folks. This kid's going to continue for, for a while. On a while. He's going to have a career as long as he wants. <laughs> and Amber Midthunder, I just thought for some reason, really stuck out as a really just dynamic comedic actress. Wouldn't you agree? Just wonderful. You must have just been like, wow, this is wonderful. Because they so, so, so much fun. Just beautiful storytelling. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think um, you know, it was, it was a... It was a great kind of environment to have like sort of you had people like like Amber, like Julia, like Jessica that had, you know, that had professional experience. And you had, you know, basically our 10 our 10 players mm-hmm. who um, were, I think, for the most part, had never set foot on a film set before no. this, you know. And so it was it actually You'd kind never of, know. You'd never know. They were just well, wonderful I, kids. I, I think I think that was part, part of that, too, was also, you know, I think for, for myself and and you know, having had the chance to work with first time or non-actors, you know, like I sort of, I was aware of my limitations as well too, you know, and I think, I think one of the things is that, you know, when you're working with established actors, you've got time during prep to rehearse and the actors are doing a lot of their work on their own. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think um, uh, one of the things that was important for me was, was bringing on somebody who could work with the actors and, and um, give them um, some, you know, foundation, some, some, some foundational tools and, and skills uh, that they could take onto a film set. And so we actually hired an acting coach, the Noelle Gentile, oh, nice. um, who came in and she kind of specializes in working with um, non-actors or athletes who are going to act and and um, uh, basically people who don't come from a traditional sort of acting background. Um, mm-hmm. And she was absolutely instrumental because she was able to work with them while I was like location scouting and prepping and doing all this other stuff. And she was an absolutely invaluable asset. Um, and I have to acknowledge her, um, That's you know, um, her work with those uh, kids to get them primed and ready for for wow. shooting. These kids come from the 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 places we're trying to 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 portray. Mm-hmm. So for a lot of it was just a lot of it was just trying to give them permission to be themselves, um, and that that came you know that sort of manifested in 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 the form of like drama but also comedy and humor and i think that dovetails in like you know amber's having fun so devin's having fun you know and they're kind of building off each other um mm-hmm. and there were a, there were definitely a couple of moments where we were able to i feel like we were able to capture lightning in a bottle i was like that's the res yeah, that's, that's, that's that's the experience that i know that's awesome that's awesome i, I was going to ask you okay last two questions here um just I want to be mindful of your time, but um, I wanted to ask, you know, your approach, your per- the way you approached. Uh, I think that if there was ever a time where you would dro- where a filmmaker such as yourself addressed the existence of generational trauma within Native communities um, without going like over the top, you addressed it appropriately. Um, and and realistically about how we as Native people, no matter where we are, face trauma that we're still trying to recover from today, you know, based upon what our ancestors have gone through. And there's a lot of trauma in this film, but it's not pushed in your face. It's kind of a residual effect of like, look, this happened to Native people. And I thought you just did beautifully in that sense. Can you talk about how you address that? And the final question will, will, will be about any lucky magical moments that you caught on film? Cause you're talking about this bottled lightning and that's very exciting to me because it looked, there were so many beautifully done organic moments. I was just like, wow, some of this just had to be beautiful, beautiful, wonderful luck. Cause it was so natural and so pure. Some of the moments that, that you captured. So yeah. first, question, first question about trauma next about lucky moments. <laughs> 
yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of it, a lot of it was, was really just trying to be, trying to be true, trying to be honest, trying to be realistic in our approach while also, you know, without giving anything away, you know, we, we also didn't want to romanticize, glamorize, or sort of like, you know, sensationalize anything. And so it was really about just trying to, you know, uh, uh, you know, use, use your own internal barometer as much as you can to, you know, with authenticity sort of being our North star, you know, um, you know, or, you know, my job is not to be the morality police. My job is not to be, you know, um, to um, try to solve anything or try to, to, um, you know, you know, solve trauma. It's, it's to tell a story, you know, and hopefully that can spark a conversation and somebody much smarter than myself, uh, you know, can come up with some, some way to resolve things in a, in a more productive manner. Um, but for, for us, it was really just about, you know, like what feels real, what feels authentic. And if it doesn't feel that way, uh, how, how are we going to, how, how can we get back into that lane of authenticity? Mm, nice. Um, so yeah. And that, that meant, that meant showing the good, the bad and the ugly, you know, yeah. like I think in, in, but also not shying away from stuff and also simultaneously, you know, like there are certain things that we wanted to be respectful of. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I, one of the yeah. neat moments is right at the beginning that it just was totally just a tiny little moment of a barking res dog, right? at the beginning. I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. Well, well, I, you know? <laughs> I will say we felt we we definitely fell short in 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 res dog uh, presence in the film. So oh, that, I don't know about in that, that in that regard, know. we fell short, but uh, we tried our best. Res we dogs can be a little too wild on a film. <laughs> I think yeah. res dogs can be a little too wild on a film set, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and I was asking about the magical moments. Anything you might have caught? You were like, "Wow, we did it!" Or, or you know, it just the whole film is magical moments. But I just. Yeah. And yeah, no, I, with you. again, I think, I think, it, I think it starts with casting. I think it starts with casting and, and having these, having these kids that um, could tap into their own, um, their own experiences and bring that onto camera. And, and so much of that was just trying to, trying to give them permission to, mm -hmm. to, to be themselves and to draw from those things. You know, like I think for myself, like I, a lot of times, like for myself as a director, I'll come in with a very specific idea of what I want from a from a scene mm -hmm. and how I think it, how I think it should play or go, yeah. um, and then they'll do something that you know, or just a, a line read or a tweak or or something like that. That um, it's like, damn, that's so much better than what I thought of. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, oh. you have to kind of get it out of your own mind as well too, and, yeah. and be open to that. A lot of it was, you know, just sort of being open to inspiration in the moment. There's this there's a scene with um, uh, it's Devin and Amber and they're in a car together. And I think it was probably our third day of shooting. <laughs> and, um, uh, and, and for these kids, it's their third day ever on a film set. Right. Wow. And yeah. so Devin Sampson Craig and Amber Mid Thunder, you know, they pull up in this car and have a conversation with, right. with Kachani, our, our main character. I remember. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, um, I remember, I, I just remember the way they were sort of playing off each other and the way yes. they were kind of like vibing. That's, um, I, you know what, as a matter of fact, I yeah. think that's the reason why I said Kachani and Amber, because the dynamic energy between them, it just something about this, you know, they just all, just beautiful moment after beautiful moment. So yeah. Just beautiful moment after beautiful moment. And I literally was like, uh, <laughs> at some <laughs> points and going, yeah, no, so if you want to, want to have excitement and blast, blast watch Res Ball. This thing <laughs> is so far my favorite film of 2024. It is just a blast, just a blast. And mark my words, this will continue to be an, an iconic film, not just for Indian country, but on Netflix. Netflix is going to be like, wow, okay. Native stories are a good story. This is just a beautiful beautiful story and i recommend highly anyone check this out because it's just it's just it's just fantastic I, I have to give sincere sincere you know high fives thumbs up back pats whatever i can do to say this was just a beautiful beautiful job and by the way i reached out to sterling and i said hey and he says tell sydney i miss her we're both so busy we never see each other very much <laughs> so yeah yeah <laughs> no he's he's uh yeah he's 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 a busy guy yeah you guys all are. Look at you all. Look at you all, you know, just killing it in the world of, of Indian country film. I just, and, and bringing it to the world. And it's no longer just Indian country film. You have transcended, you know, what 
we could have ever expected. Our ancestors are looking at all you guys just going, keep killing it. You know, I'm just thrilled to talk to you. And I think you've been doing wonderful work. And let me be the first to say, one of the first to say, Res Ball is just spectacular. I really mean it. It's just a fantastic film. Fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I just want to say thank you so much to Sydney Freeland. I want to say thank you to Netflix. And I think Resball is just going to be killing it. You guys check it out. Uh, get ready for the release of the trailer. If you haven't seen it, you can find it on, of course, YouTube. But it's also going to be here on NativeViewpoint.com on the YouTube channel as well. So, guys, uh, thank you so very much to Sydney Freeland. Sydney, you have just been, just been, just been phenomenal. You know, I watch your work over and over and over again. And I'm so excited I get to talk to you and just hear straight from you how, you know, you you approach these things. And it's just really exciting. It's just so, so, so exciting. I never expected, you know, to see the amazing things I see today. And that's because of trailblazers like you. Absolutely. Trailblazers like you, you know. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. It's a brave, brave new world. It's a brave new world. You got, you got native, <laughs> native shows, native actors, native actresses getting Emmy nominations. You know, it's a very exciting time and place to be right now. It really, really is extremely exciting. Exciting. And you're one of the ones leading the charge and you know, we're all watching because you're just continuing to kick butt. So Sydney, you are awesome. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate talking to you as always. Awesome. <laughs> All Thanks, right. Vincent. Take care. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. Ona, thank you so much for watching, folks. Appreciate you all.